Hey y'all, good to see ya. Welcome back to Grassroots Garden. I'm Ryan and we are at the Augusta Airport because today we're going to Miami for the 44th International Aeroid Show. I'm going to look at some amazing plants, meet some cool people, learn, learn some new things. So get your flip flops on and let's get ready to go because the more you know, the more you grow. I don't know about y'all, but I feel good. Okay, y'all, we made it through security without a hitch, so that's a good thing. Now we just gotta go to our gate, wait a little bit, fly to Atlanta. We got a little layover there, and then we're off to Miami, so I hope y'all are ready. Um, I just stepped out into this little courtyard area and checked out what the Augusta Airport has done here. Really nice little water feature, nice little babbling brook, creek type thing. Looks really nice adds a lot you don't see that a lot of airports augusta is pretty pretty small but anyhow let's go to the gate i'm excited i cannot wait to see some palm trees and smell some salt air and see some awesome plants so let's go let's go wait <laughs> Well, we made it to Miami, guys. Just waiting on our Uber. Take us to the hotel, and it is nice and hot and humid and sticky. I like it already. All right, guys. Finally made it to our hotel, and uh, I think I did pretty good. So this is the Biltmore in Coral Gables, and we'll walk around in a minute, uh, and I'll show you this place. It is absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful fountain in the background. We've got palm trees. There's split-leaf philodendrons fancy cars this is uh this is definitely different than back home so but well, we're gonna enjoy it we got a couple days here and you guys are gonna hang out with me the entire time so uh let's go see what this hotel's got to offer it looks amazing let's go check it out okay so here's going in the main lobby and this lobby is unreal old venetian style roof ceiling and check out these bird cages got to have one of these that is so cool look at this place you guys this is the restaurant downstairs giant fountain humongous umbrellas never seen umbrellas this big and there's a huge orchid a nice dendrobium just kind of hanging out on this tree over here. This place is phenomenal. And here's just above where we were earlier, the restaurant downstairs, La Fontana, or the fountain restaurant. And there's those huge <laughs> umbrellas they have. That place looks really cool. This place looks really old and rustic, but yeah, elegant and just beautiful. Love all the colors. The tile they put on the wall there. Just look at this hotel, you guys. I, you know, when I booked it online, I was just look every all the hotels around here looked like this, and I thought it was just kind of, you know, decorated like Disney style. But this one's really been here like this for a long time. And the Uber driver told me that maybe that top uh, penthouse up there, Al Capone, that was his. So I gotta research that story and see if it's true or not. But pretty neat history here. I'm just loving it already. This place is something else, you guys. I had no idea when I booked it uh, how nice it really was. And it wasn't that expensive, believe it or not. It must be off season or something. 
but it is really, really breathtakingly beautiful. One of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed at. So this is gonna be a fun weekend, y'all. So down here we have this big huge fountain which I think might be the entrance to Coral Gables. That is a big big fountain. Really pretty. Look at that guys. Isn't that beautiful? Hopefully it don't rain on us. I heard thunder a while ago but I think we still got like 20 more minutes to walk so and I got to figure out which way to go. The streets are just gorgeous down here you guys and it's such a quiet little place. One reason I think it's so quiet or at right now is because I'm lost <laughs> and I have no idea where I'm at. And dude gave me a map but I'm not very good at reading them evidently. So we got to find a little noisier place and I think we'll be closer to this Miracle Mile. All right I think we're back on track now although while <laughs> looking up in the canopy of all of those uh, strangler figs something fell in my eye. So we're struggling a little bit here, but I think we are on the right track now because there's definitely a lot more buildings and a lot more people. So I think we're gonna be okay. Y'all gotta be careful when you come with me. My sense of direction is absolutely horrible and I get lost everywhere I go. And I don't know what kind of tree this is. It kind of looks like a Dracaena, but I really don't know. It's pretty huge out in front of these apartments pretty neat looking nice focal point for sure all right I think we're getting close guys I smell food now and what was supposed to be a 25 minute walk turned into maybe well an hour but we made it and that's the important part and I'm really hungry now so this place is called Booyah um, it's supposed to be really good two people have recommended it to me so far so Let's go check it out and see what it's all about. Well, we for sure made it, but it's really crowded inside. I think we're a little late because we got lost. But uh, we've got a nice little table out here on the street so we can kind of watch the, the traffic and the folks walk by. So let's see what this, uh, this place is all about. So this is evidently uh, a gastro bar, which I don't even know what that means to tell you the truth, but a lot of tapas and some cool drinks. So we're gonna get us something to drink for sure. I'm really thirsty after that walk. So let's uh, see uh, see what this food looks like because I'm starving. And the young lady that set me down here said we have to try the patatas bravas. So we're gonna try that. And then we're gonna find us a good cold beer to wash it down with. Guys, I apologize. I did not film any more of the dinner because I got so engrossed in eating my supper and drinking this amazing beer this guy brought me till uh, I just kind of didn't want to film anymore, to be honest, and it got dark. But however, I will show you this awesome room real quick. And we're gonna call it a night and we're gonna do something different tomorrow. Don't even know what yet, but it's gonna be fun, I'm sure. So check this spread out, y'all. This is fancy. Way more fancy than what I need, but hey, it is what it is. Got a little um, salon area, living room, whatever you want to call it over here. Another bathroom. Little, but very cool. So that bed looks mighty inviting. And so I think I might be in that thing pretty soon. That being said, I'm going to go take a shower. I'm tired of traveling all day. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, coming to Miami with me. Tomorrow, I think we're going to go to the beach and maybe do one of the little tour city tours. So uh, hopefully we will see you guys. Well, if you just keep watching the video, we're going to see you tomorrow. I'm tired. Later. <laughs>
All right, guys, we finally made it to South Beach here. Haven't actually seen the beach yet, but that's where we're headed. Got kind of a storm behind us too. So hopefully we can find some cover if need be. A pretty crazy little place down here so far. So uh, let's go check this beach out, see what it looks like. Okay, I don't know how long we're gonna be out here on the beach because it is definitely storming and I think it's coming this way, but at least we could say we made it to South Beach, really pretty beach. So the water's pretty clear. But that storm, I think it's gonna run us off, y'all. See how long we can make it. Got to stick our feet in the water at least and then lightning started popping and uh, that storm's not far off so we're going to go to one of these little restaurants over here along the strip kind of wait the storm out hopefully we'll get to go back but if nothing else at least i can say i put my toes in the sand on south beach y'all this much any hotel that has variegated monstera <laughs> as carpet is cool with me and that awesome I got back to the room I didn't film anymore I was just exhausted but today we're gonna go see what we can get into we're gonna try to do an airboat tour who knows what else we're gonna get into. So let's get us some Uber called and uh, let's go have some fun. All right guys, we made it to the ramp and I think that's our airboat coming here. So this should be, should be an experience to say the least. So we're out in the Everglades today and it is hot, but I'd rather be here than somewhere cold. So let's go see what we can see on this airboat ride and uh, hopefully we don't get eaten by alligators. Okay, so evidently, the Uber driver dropped me off at the wrong ramp. So we're having to hoof it down to the other ramp and jump on our boat that's hopefully still there. I've always heard that they're, they, they can be aggressive. I've been close to a 16 foot croc. We were in a, in a 12 foot John boat in a, in a narrow canal fishing mm -hmm. yeah. and that thing was laying on the bank. I thought it, from a distance, it looked like a log <laughs> until I got close enough and saw the teeth. Yeah. It's crocodile teeth, buddy. Huge. They're huge and they always show. Difference between the crocs and the gators, the, the, the gators have a smaller bottom jaw. So you're normally just seeing teeth coming out of the top a little bit on the sides, but the bottom jaws got everything tucked away. The crocodiles have the same size jaws, so their okay. teeth closed or open are always hanging out, and they're two or three times the size of a gator's teeth. Wow! And they've got a they've got a pointy, more pointy snout than the, than the gators do. That's crazy. They, a gator's got to get about three foot before he's he can kind of hold his own. Then he's got to worry about you know other male gators and the pythons. Oh, don't let's not see any of those today, man. I'm we scared to death of snakes. We uh, <laughs> I hate them. them. But just to just to give you an idea, this is about five or six years ago, about about four miles oh, southwest no of us. No way. What? He's holding up the tail. Look at how fat it is on the airboat. That's what? crazy. I think it just eaten a deer. It was what? so full when they pulled up on it, it wouldn't even move. They drug it up on the boat live. When they got it back to the ramp, I lost the other picture, and they cut it open. Whole deer. Whole deer in its belly. Whoa. And that's the problem. They're not supposed to be here, obviously. They're right. from Asia, yeah. India. Yeah. Um, you know, pets being loosed out here, just like these fish. 
people dump their fish tanks out in canals and stuff. That's yeah. Nice. That's why we're stocked with all these invasives. Yeah. There's other invasive species as far as snakes go and other things, but the pythons are the ones that are doing the most damage because they're aquatic snakes. How many are there? They, they say there's over a million. What? what? There, there, there's as much, almost as much pythons as alligators now, and they're getting what? ready to overtake that. The alligators are no longer top of the food chain. The pythons Man. have taken that spot out. Really? Gators lay their eggs one time a year, 40 plus, give or take. The pythons lay eggs three times a year, and they can lay upwards of 90 eggs at a time. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a predator. You don't get a lot of runoff from north of us and south of us where they've, they've cleared a lot of the... Uh, of the landscape and, and they farm it mm -hmm. and the, the runoff from the fertilizers and stuff has screwed the water All right up here we're contained by a levee this is a this place is called the francis taylor wildlife management area it's also a water containment area for water management but it's a huge area it's 15 miles running east and west inside the levee and 30 miles north and south oh that's big um yeah and there's you know the, the grass is one big filter there's oh yeah there's some other stuff in the water called paraphyton that i'll show y'all Oh yeah! All the brown stuff that's on top of the water, uh -huh. major filter that cleans the water. So that's it's... cool. People don't realize how important these ecosystems are, yeah. man. Oh yeah. So I'm from Augusta, Georgia, but we go down to Beaufort, South Carolina, shrimp all the time. You know, down in the Low Country, and uh, that's like Mother Earth's kidneys. You know, absolutely. Here and there too. They, they, they actually call this sheet flow. It, it's not a stream. You know, right. normally you think of a river that's moving. It's one big wide sheet of water that's, that, that's slowly moving south. It's the slowest moving river. Obviously, you don't see it moving. It moves about 50 to 100 yards a day, and it's the shallowest. Normally, this place never got deeper than between like 8 to 18 inches, depending on where you were standing, until springtime rolls around, um, and we go through a drought. And some years, all that water out there is completely gone. Yeah, this is all rain-driven. It's all rainwater. Originally, how it worked, I'll back up. I'll go back in time. Lake Okeechobee north of us that's our big lake in the state okeechobee means big water mm -hmm. um, that lake when the summer rains kick in fills up and overflows mm -hmm. lake okeechobee is about 29 foot above sea level so from the lake 100 miles south the water moves all the way to the gulf so 29 feet in 100 miles is a gradual slope that's why it just creeps yeah, yeah. so for starters they call this the bottom of the food chain in the Everglades. <laughs> Not for what it is because it's basically plant detritus. It's all the decaying lilies and stuff out here. It merges with the algae and uh, it's home to a lot of, lot of little things. A lot of microbes, fish eggs, mosquito larvae, swamp eggs, or well, freshwater shrimp eggs. Um, all those little things. See all the little fish, yeah. minnows, guppies, all these little dudes. Mm -hmm. They're feeding off of the stuff that lives in here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where it's really thick, if you were to pick it up, it, you know, it, it could be four or five inches thick in some spots. It's just like a big wet sponge. Wow. So it holds water really well. You squeeze it, I mean, squeeze, even squeezing this, you get a lot of moisture out of it. What that does is when we go through our droughts and all this water is gone, the paraffin, it all sits on the bottom. It holds most of that moisture. So. It's keeping all that living stuff alive in there, the fish eggs and everything um, that ah. need water. Um, it, it keeps the, that stuff going. It keeps the, the bottom nice and moist. The top quarter inch, half inch of it completely dries out. Um, that stuff, if you grab a hold of it, kind of turns the dust in your hands. That turns into a soil that's called marl. Marl is super nutrient rich. The farmers that are farming, you know, growing stuff out here in the areas that they've cleared out, uh, they grow in this stuff, and it's it's good to grow in. Huh. Oh, that feels good. That's nice. It's kind of soft on the ground. <laughs> it is. Well, y'all, that was some kind of fun. Love that airboat ride. That was amazing. Uh, Mike did a fantastic job. Super knowledgeable guy nice to have somebody that's really passionate about their job and knows what they're talking about too makes the experience just so much more so i hope y'all enjoyed right that ride i sure did pants were a little wet but it was well worth it and uh that was just that was phenomenal loved every minute of it so cool now we are in the art district of downtown miami called winwood walls and so all of the buildings around here all have some type of artwork on them it's really pretty i just got dropped off but look behind me here, just everywhere, there's some kind of artwork. So it's very colorful, 
So I'm gonna walk around here and check this place out and absorb a little bit of the Miami culture. I think we may have to go to this place over here because it smells delicious. Hey, how are you? It smells delicious. Okay, so we just sat down here at Bacan restaurant and the first place my eye goes to is the insect menu. So I'm like, what? But it's for real. I asked the waiter and he says what it is they like to serve um, you know, unique foods that are considered delicacies in parts of Mexico. So I've got us some grasshoppers coming and some ants eggs. And he said the ants eggs are market price, so they're $25. So I just paid $25 for ants eggs. And I'm going to eat them. I don't know if I'm going to eat them all, but I'm going to eat some. And we're going to eat some grasshoppers too. I couldn't do the worms. So they have agave worms. I'll eat just about anything but cannot do worms. At least I don't think I could. Maybe I have me another beer and uh, and I might try some worms, but I doubt it. So anyway, this should be an experience um, to say the least. Alright, so my ant eggs just got brought to me. Can't believe I'm about to eat this. And my crickets. It doesn't look half bad, y'all. I mean, I get it, but it doesn't look that bad. Okay, well, here goes nothing. This is the uh, ant egg. Not bad. It kind of tastes like hash, like barbecue hash actually really good that's surprising my first ant eggs ever not bad you just have to not think about it being ant eggs you can get that out of your mind it's actually really good okay now this one scares me a little bit this is our crickets on a tortilla with guacamole and cheese. Hmm, okay. Not a lot of taste really other than the guacamole and like the salt and lime thank goodness I don't really know what crickets are supposed to taste like but it's really hard looking at their legs and their little bodies and not think about what you're eating but I did it don't know if I'm gonna take another bite but I did that one for y'all so y'all better like this video that's all I ask but the ant eggs are pretty good so anyway, we're eating bugs today. I don't really know what else to say. So the ant eggs I could do, the grasshoppers, I couldn't do any more than the one bite. But at least I tried it. Now I've got some ceviche with fish and shrimp and octopus. That should be delicious. But leaving the insects alone for the rest of the day. Well, that was definitely the weirdest lunch I've ever had but hey went in Rome so I guess now I'm gonna walk around here just a little bit more and then we're gonna hop over to the uh, the gardens and check those out you like how I said hop after I just ate grasshoppers I've got issues
and today is the plant sale so we're just waiting for them to open people are trying to get in now and we can't because there's a gate I don't think I can hop it either or I would try so anyway today should be awesome I uh, can't wait to see all the vendors in here and all the cool plants they've got so we'll give it a little bit longer when those gates open we're gonna be one of the first ones in hopefully pretty sure we're sneaking in right now because we kind of went through the gate as some cars were coming through so I'm not sure if we're gonna get in trouble or not but I'm trying it anyway a couple other folks went through too so we're walking down the entry road and we're gonna see if we can actually get in to see some plants yet I don't know all right guys this time they're opening the gates and letting us in to the Arrowwood show so we uh, got to go see what this thing's all about okay y'all so as soon as you come through the gates here at Fairchild you enter this canopy I mean it's just like being in the jungle so cool well I say it's cool it's cool to look at but it's hot as crap today so it's gonna be a, a scorcher for sure I'm already sweaty but it's gonna be worth it nice little bench as you come in some really nice dendrobiums on the back of it that's kind of cool never seen that before they kind of just have them in a tray on the back of the bench they're pretty neat it's a beautiful place so far and we've only made it like 20 feet in so this should be a pretty spectacular trip here guys I'm following you guys it's better than following me, I tell you that much. Are you gonna load the wagon before we get walking? <laughs> I don't even know where to go first. Let's go in here and see what we've got. Some alocasia. Tiny dancer, dragon tooth, dragon scale, oh, yeah. philodendrons. That's yeah, that's all one. Um, lots of cuttings. You can set up that's Lani Eye. Man, look at all the ties. Those are beautiful. Got some beautiful anthuriums. Dr. Block in Ethereum, 300 bucks. The pretty leaves on those. Gorgeous. Hey, how y'all doing today? Doing great. Got some beautiful stuff. A little Ace of Spades there. Got some good looking plants. I appreciate it, man. Sure hard, huh? Where about y'all at? Oh, just outside of Nashville. Oh, really? Uh huh. Oh, I feel like I've seen y'all on the yeah. internet before. Yeah, that's right. I'm in South Carolina. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow, look at all the anthuriums. Hey, how are you? Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Here's that colocasia. I've been looking for Waikiki. Look at the cool pattern on that leaf. Definitely gonna have to get one of those. Here's white lava. I do have that one. Not a tremendous <laughs> amount of difference from Waikiki, Sorry, other than Waikiki's got a much more purple stem. Got a lot of big ties down here. Here's the Monstera pinnipartita, I think is how you, how you say that. A big one, too. Man, you got some gorgeous stuff, man. How are you? Yeah, not bad. How about you? Doing good. Variegation heaven. Yeah. Yeah, we got a couple <laughs> over there. Yes, you do. Sorry, excuse me. Look at all the Monstera. I think I need to get me a banana before they're all gone. Five of them are already gone. We only brought ten. Really? Yeah, okay. I better. Excuse me. We better go ahead and get us one then. Let's 
see. He's got mashed fruits. Oh my God, y'all. I have no idea how hot it is down here. Like I do good with heat and I love summertime, but it's a, uh, it's a hot. But I uh, found some little bit of shade and also found this really cool tree that I've never ever seen before. A lot of folks are taking pictures of it. As you see behind me. So uh, check this thing out right here. It's also highly fragrant. Beautiful, beautiful tree. Never seen anything like it. Check this thing out. Loaded with flowers and the, the flower spikes are just coming out of the actual tree. And look at these flowers. Really exotic, just uh, amazing specimen. I've never seen anything like it. I wish you guys could smell it. It's really sweet. Got a huge philodendron climbing it. Look at that thing, just loaded with flowers all the way to about halfway up it. Really cool tree. We gotta find out what the name of this one is. It's by this little lizard. He's got an orange head and he ran around the tree from me every time I tried to get him, but I finally think I got him. Hopefully y'all can see him there. Weird looking dude. Got our variegated banana. That one been on the list for quite some time. Hopefully he's still back there in my backpack. Yep. So that's cool. We're gonna plant him in the tropical greenhouse and hope that Larry doesn't uh, tear it to shreds. And here's some type of African palm. It's got this huge trunk. I mean, it's probably over two feet in diameter. And then I don't know if something happened to it or if this is just the way that it grows. But just a kind of a small clump of fronds up on the very top of it. All right, so it looks like we found another one of those cool trees. It's a cannonball tree. Costa Rica to Brazil. Corupita guianensis. And this one, the flowers come all the way out onto the sidewalk. This is one of the most unusual trees I have ever seen. <laughs> found these two little green lizards. They kind of look like chameleons. Whoa, crap. That one just scared the hell out of me. Okay, they're not lizards. They're just baby iguanas. So now I'm seeing a lot, lot more of them. And not sure if mom is too happy that I just got close to her baby. Wow. <laughs> that was... That scared me. Her babies are all up in the tree. They're so bright green. I've never seen iguanas that bright green. That's pretty cool. There must be one, two, three, four, five, six of her babies all in this tree. <laughs> well, that got my heart beating. That's for sure. Sorry, Mom. Didn't see you there. Uh, he scared the crap out of me. That's pretty cool. I have misters running up trees, keeping it <laughs> even more humid. Just what we need. Like it's not already 150% humidity and 100 degrees. Actually, feels pretty good up in the shade, though. Hey, here's a yellow shrimp plant. We had these for sale. I think we sold them all. There's another little tea tiny lizard right there also. He's gone. Yeah, so the golden or yellow shrimp plant. There's something through the mist right there. See it gl actually glowing red, so a little streak of light made it through. Maybe you can get around and see if that's some kind of ginger. I really don't know if we can get to it, but check out how cool that is. There it goes, the mist cleared out a little bit so we can see that flower. I don't know what that is, but that's pretty incredible. And we've got an orchid growing on the tree right here. Not exactly sure what it is. I have to ask my buddy Steve. This place is 
unreal, y'all. There are just so many plants to look at. I mean, from the floor all the way up to the canopy. You just gotta be looking everywhere. Oh, check this out. I don't know, I have no idea. See, I don't know any of these plants. Though. That's the only thing that's frustrating me right now. Look at that cool flower, shaped like a star fruit. And just loaded with flowers and there's like a river going through here. This is straight up jungle. Man, if I could get the jungle house like this, y'all, we'd be, we'd be doing something. Look at that. Water's just pouring out of like a stump. And then comes right through here. They got tons of ferns down there. And let's follow this. Oh, that mist feels good, believe it or not. Because it is hot out there in the, the plant show. And then the river just keeps going through this little rainforest jungle area. This is so cool. And it looks like it goes under this little bridge right here. Look at that. That is gorgeous, man. With this fog in here and the sunlight coming through. This is just like a photographer's dream right now. There's a Catlia blooming. Look how it's just pasted itself to this tree. I'm sure they probably helped it in the beginning, but it's just, just hanging on. Down here in super low light, filtered sunlight coming through the tropical canopy whoa check this out there's just stuff every which way i turn there is something cool to look at and something i've never seen before so i guess these are aerial roots hanging off this tree i don't think they're flowers but look at it look kind of looks like that tree off of a uh, avatar uh, it's cool man Man, with conditions like this, even I probably can make some pretty cool video. All you gotta do is just walk through here and, and hit record. I mean, look, you can just look through spots and just the sunlight has just lit up all of these cool plants, man. It's just really, really unreal. It's like a movie set. Like I'm waiting for gorillas to pop out. Hopefully they don't, but wouldn't be surprised up in here. Check that palm out. That's cool looking. Well, there's no pressure on me to identify any of these plants because I don't know any of them. However, yep, <laughs> as I say that, there's a giant Thai constellation Monstera just kind of hanging out here in the jungle. <laughs> That's a monster. I got it planted in the in there a little bit so nobody can get to it. And here's a Phalaenopsis, just like I was telling you guys during the repot video, how they can, how they can grow. And then this one is, oh man, I can't remember. Why can't I remember right now? My brain is just shot. Monstera something or other. Look at it climbing up. The vines in this place are just incredible. These must be 20 feet long hanging down. They're really unbelievable. Orchids everywhere. I guess that maybe is their lab or something in there. Orchids just hanging out there. This is the innovation studio, whatever that is. I guess that's where they innovate, if I had to guess. Here's some Vandas. Just maybe two or three are in bloom. 
right at the moment. Not exactly the sure of the name of this one, whether this is um, Philodendron Gigantium. That's what I think it is, I'm not positive, so y'all correct me in the comments below on all, any and all plants. <laughs> Feel free to, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But you definitely can tell this guy's a runner as he is just all over the, uh, the forest floor right here. Big, big plant though. And there's some type of huge anthurium. Oh, there is that um, moon and stars, I think it's called the uh, cast iron plant. I think we got a little bit of that for sale as well. And look at the inflorescence on this plant. It's huge. That's probably 18 inches on the old one and a foot plus on the new one. I don't know what this is, but I like it. This is plant nerd heaven. I could walk around here all day long, but I think I'm going to go back into the show. I made one round, um, but it was pretty crazy. That was the right time we came in. Uh, this is that Alocasia. I can't remember. I don't think it's Zabrina. If y'all know, tell me because I want this one. But it has really cool patterning on the leaf and then also on the stem, the petiole there. So if y'all know, comment below. So I got to find that one. It might be here. There's a really cool heliconia. You can see its blooms right there. There we go. Really cool tropical plant. We got one large one in our greenhouse at home that's blooming right now. Well, I guess let's go back out to the to the full sun area to the show and see what's happening still looks like it's pretty crazy but uh waiting on my friends mike and trish to get here they were running a little late today hey here's some vandas <laughs> i get sidetracked so easy it's like oh here's some something i want to go see it's a cool really nice strawberry color when blooming and some purples the base of this is this a ponytail no way it is holy crap that is the biggest ponytail ball i've ever seen that base is every bit of 10 foot from widest point to widest point that is a monster wow it looks like it's crazier than it was before Yep, definitely crazy air. <laughs> Bring a wagon. Bring a cart. Be smart. Because I just got a backpack. Of course, I can't take a whole lot home anyway because I flew down, but Mike and Trish drove, so... I told him I'd give them a few bucks in gas to haul some stuff back for me. But uh, not going buying crazy this time. I've got enough plants in the greenhouse as is. So we just get a few of the really rare big ticket items that's on our list, like the banana. So we come here often. I love how they stamp the concrete here but a lot of the plants that you're actually seeing you know planted right there i guess they just took leaves that have fallen off or just leaves in general and stuck them in the concrete <laughs> little milk confetti syngonium not seen that one before some little bitty anthurium thai rubies this is a big jose buno 
for 250. Nice variegation, got a half moon leaf on it. Look, there's a little Morcophallus. Looks like a Morcophallus titanum. Here's a Alocasia stingray. Doesn't have a price on it. There's some little baby ones down there. I believe this is Equigenera. I'm not positive. The Warrock. That's the same one. Pretty sure we need this. This looks like big Epiprimnum Pinatum. There's a big old philodendron for all the folks that wanted more philodendrons in the video. The big painted lady. And here's a cool Mikens that they've uh, put on a pole. Monstera for all of you that wanted the Monstera. Trish, what's up, buddy? How are you? I would give you a hug, but man. It's so hot. Dude, good to see you, man. And another Calabium down here. Here's Spathophyllum Picasso. Isn't that cool? What? I have these, but they're yeah. assholes. They, they go they, away and never yeah, come back. Yeah, I know. Whoa. That anthurium is huge. Uh, no, it's the dot dot block hybrid. Says got got first place. Yep. Alocasia Amazonica variegated. I don't have that. That's pretty. Variegated Alocasia Regal Shields. Never seen that before. Need that. <laughs> None of these are for sale, unfortunately. Here's a Thematophyllum Goldie Eye variegated. We do have Goldie Eye, but we don't have the variegated one for sure. That's beautiful. Oh, look at this. Prince of Orange. So this is a Philodendron Prince of Orange, but variegated. Never seen that. So many things we need. Here's another hybrid. Anthurium. This is cool. Same Anazonica, but it like went pink. The variegated alocasia. Ooh, this is a cool looking anthurium. Michelle F5 hybrid. Really dark leaves. Purple hue to them. How are you? Man, this says Sirtosperma, but I don't know what that even is. Excuse me. Red Emerald, Strawberry Shake, Philodendron. And then this looks like Skeleto, but let's see. Monstera species from Colombia. So it's just a species. Huge leaves. And the 
administrations open up up top. There's a variegated philodendron of some sort. Ooh, look at this cool, this is a xanthosoma. Kind of like the Mickey Mouse ones we have, but a lot of variegation spitting out on it, but some. This is a philodendron alcinonii, maybe? Not sure how to pronounce that one, to be honest. Cool looking thing, though. Really neat variegation to it. Real streaky variegation. Philodendron solosum. A lot of philodendrons in here. So for all you folks that wanted the philodendrons, there you go. This has got to be a Raphlodophora tetrasperma. Ooh, dragon tail variegated. That's nice. Never seen that one. This is pretty neat how they did this Epiprimnum panatum Cebu Blue. It's a big one. We got another Amazonica. Right here. There's a Diffenbachia Aurora. Neat trained up tree form. I like that leaf. That's really pretty. And here is what my buddy's looking for, but I don't think, uh, I know this one isn't for sale. Philodendron tortum. And that's quite a large specimen. So, sorry Jeff. Uh, I did find the plant you were looking for, but it's not for sale, buddy. Another big thematophyllum. This one's called, let's see, Hope. Variegated thematophyllum. <laughs> you too. So here's another really very, I mean, really variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma. This one's called Minima. Ethereum Bat Boy. That's a cool one. I've never seen that. What else we got over here? Some huge Monstera. A Skeleto. That's big. Yeah. The biggest, that's definitely the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah, it's huge, man. That is cool. I have one about 165th of that size. <laughs> that's crazy. Let's see what the name of this guy is. Lowrider. Alocasia Lowrider. Love the variegation on her. She is all kind of modeled up. It's camouflage type. Here's a, whoa, this is a weird philodendron. Look at this guy, it's philodendron chunky. The leaves kind of curl under. Never seen, <laughs> y'all probably tired of me saying, never seen that, never seen that before, but I haven't seen any of these. Uh, can't see the tag and I'm scared to touch some of these plants, but some of them go for many thousands. There's some type of anthurium right there. And then this is a philodendron melin. I do that, kid. This is a cool philodendron. Really sub. <laughs> Little kid just got in trouble for touching a couple thousand dollar plant. I don't blame him. I want to touch too, but I don't want to get in trouble. 
Hey, look at this one. It's got my last name. Philodendron William C.I. William C.I.? I don't know how you would pronounce that. Cool looking leaves though. Look at those big monster long leaves. I can't see. Looks like some more Raphidophora, Tetrasperma, Epiprimnum, uh, Amidrium. Here, I'll see if I can zoom in. We can't get back there. We'll have to give our camera to that little kid. I'll send him back there. He was fixing to go. Another Epiprimnum. Beautiful plants. I want to know what this second one is. Epiprimnum and gorgeous gorgeous stuff in here man this is insane and it's also cool i'm trying to absorb all i can but it's getting a little too loud and too many kids in here for me so i'm uh i'm bailing all right miss trish what you got there darling my new dock block oh that's pretty and it's flowering Gorgeous. And it even looks prettier with Mike holding it. So that helps out a bunch. Okay. Look who we met. Paula from Perfect Toys Nursery. Awesome. You're always, you're, and you're always so much fun to watch because you're just jumping around. <laughs> yeah. and so that was so cool. Just met Miss Paula with Perfect Choice Nursery. Love her video. Y'all got to go check out her channel too. They have um, a nursery only about 30 minutes from here. And so we might tomorrow go try to check that out if we have time, but they're awesome plants, at least as far as the YouTube channel shows, but just a really amazing channel. So go check out Perfect Choice. Thanks for watching. <laughs>